This is what war at sea was like in the 18th century. Warships positioning themselves at sea to find the right angle for a broadside of cannonballs towards enemy ships. Each cannonball weighed six kilograms, traveling at 400 meters per second. Obviously, this kind of warfare created an enormous need for wood that was strong enough. Only oak would do. These oaks were so vital to the war effort that if you chop one down without the king's permission, it would get you hanged. This great oak tree isn't actually that suitable for building ship holes. It's much better for climbing. You need tall, straight trees with no twigs or branches. Like this one. In order for the tree to be perfect and straight, it needs to be tended for generations. In 1558, King Gustav Vossa proclaimed all oaks for royal property, and the Swedish king imposed a death penalty for repeat offenders in tree felling. The recognition that these oaks needed protecting and preserving for naval shipbuilding came naturally, since around 2,000 of these trees would be needed for each warship. Also at this time, Europe was at war. The Swedish kingdom had a rough time from the 16th century all the way through to the Napoleonic Wars. The naval shipbuilding industry had been working overtime for centuries. As supplies from Europe were out of the question due to the war situation and embargoes, the Swedish state realised they were running out of the much-needed oak trees. So, in 1831, the Swedish king commissioned the planting of 300,000 oak saplings. Now, having seemingly thought of everything, the decision fell on planting them right here on Visings Ur. The strongest oak grows the fastest, and that happens with the help of fertile soil with access to a lot of water. What better place than here? So imagine limbing and felling these huge oaks must be quite dangerous. Well, it can be, obviously. It's a, it's a huge task. So back in the mid-1800s, that task must have been even harder. Right, yeah. It was very, very labour-intensive as well. A lot of people. So talk me through these tools and what they did then. The axe was mainly for limbing and maybe cutting down smaller trees. OK. This one was for uh, cutting away brushes and, and uh, competing small trees. That handsaw has got two handles on it. That yeah. looks a two-man job that's labour-intensive. It is, it is, yeah. Uh, and really hard work, obviously. So thankfully, in the 21st century, at long last, we've got power tools. Yes, yes. We have the clearing saw for smaller trees, younger yeah. stands. Uh, the pole saw for cutting off branches along the stem. Well, these sound great, but obviously I'm most interested in the biggest one here. The chainsaw, right, yeah. yeah. Is this the sort of thing I'd buy in a shop and take home? Well, you could, but I think we have more suitable chainsaws for you. Oh, OK. Well, I mean, it looks fairly straightforward, is it? It is, yeah. It's uh, a really lightweight, durable chainsaw. Uh, there's nothing on it that shouldn't be there, and if it's there, it's there for a reason. So can we see this in action? Yeah, sure. Now you've seen the result, let's get back to our story. The Wiesinger oak trees that were planted back in 1831 were finally ready to become battleships. The year was 1975. For 150 years, these trees have been prepared for warfare. And when they're finally ready, all the battleships were made of steel. I wonder what went through the mind of the Rear Admiral of the Swedish Navy when he got that news. But the story doesn't end there. Today, these beautiful and huge oak trees are being put to good use, but in more peaceful times. Some have already found themselves into Swedish homes as wooden flooring and furniture, others as wooden casks for whiskey, while some have even been sent out to sea. I'm Jonathan Irwin, and this 
is Outdoor Engineering with Husqvarna.